Welcome back to the SCG Show. I'm your host, SCG. And if you're new here, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and check out the links in the description below. That being said, let's get into today's video. Mind Games and Narcissus Play. How I've decided to do this video is very simple. I'm going to tell you exactly the games and psychological tricks that narcissists play on us in order to understand and perhaps compare it to your own experiences. And on top of that, I hope I can try and give examples of when I have had mind games and psychological tricks played on me too, from personal relationships to friendships, work relationships, families, wherever. I'm going to go back and explore these experiences and try give examples as best I can but also more importantly understand that we are dealing with a very malevolent very difficult very toxic individual narcissists on a very simple level are just like spoilt children so when a spoilt child does not get their way they throw a huge tantrum, they cry, they kick, they scream, they bite, they act violent to all of those around them, particularly their parents and friends and family, and they bring shame, and it's a form of narcissistic rage. And that child normally grows up to become an entitled narcissist and will use all similar tips and tricks, such as screaming and shouting in the toy shop, in order to get their way. So it's really no different when an adult is manipulating you in order to get their way by emotionally abusing you, physically abusing you, smearing you, using people against you, turning people against you, and ultimately causing what could be a very peaceful, tranquil, healthy, successful life into a toxic nightmare, a dumpster of chaos and malevolence and toxicity. Now, whilst that can be prevented by leaving narcissists, cutting them off and going no contact, you're probably watching this video thinking to yourself, where has this happened to me? If you have any doubt in any stretch of the imagination that you have been tricked, lied to, manipulated, or there is something that is going on in your mind that you can't figure out, it's most likely that you have had a psychological trick played on you by such a toxic individual. So rest assured that you're probably right. Trust your gut. I don't care how paranoid you are. I don't care how people say to you, oh, but you're, you're, you're oversensitive, you're looking too much into things. No, people on the outside don't know what it's like to be with such individuals or to deal with such individuals. And as a result of that, the only person or the only people who can see what is going on and understand what is going on is you, the narcissist, and whether you believe in it or not, God and the universe. These people have come into our lives in order to teach us a lesson. No matter how harsh that lesson is, it's a lesson to improve our boundaries. It's a lesson that we must carry with us and inspire other people. This channel, I speak about absolutely everything from narcissism to trending topics to movie reviews. But the reason I speak so much about narcissism is because I've experienced it firsthand. And like so many other people, on YouTube and on blogs and so on and so forth. They helped me through a difficult time trying to transition from a discard and breakups and the end of relationships of many, many years to healing and surviving and thriving. So that is my gift to you. I'm trying to show you that you are not alone because guess what? When you are with a narcissist, you are alone. You're the most alone you've ever been. I've heard people say that the loneliest day they've ever experienced is their wedding day. And it's because they got married to a narcissist or they signed a contract or a deal with a toxic individual and they're 
tied into these people. But let's get into the mind games of what narcissists play and the psychological tricks they're using against you. In case you weren't too sure, hopefully this will give you some more. Love bombing is usually a very familiar and often used mind game and psychological trick from narcissists. Although it's often not recognised as such because it feels so good when you're right in the middle of it. It can consist of excessive praise, adoration, mirroring, lavish gifts, over-the-top promises, really fast-tracked intimacy, sexual escapades, loads and loads of attention, and pretty much all your time spent together. This is what happened to me. I felt on many occasions in the past with narcissistic partners that this was everything I had dreamed of. There were some things that were good, obviously, because you think to yourself, oh, wow, this is great. It's everything I ever wanted in a partner. But it's all part of the manipulation. The result can be that a partner who has been like the target will more easily drop their guard and become very trusting very easily believing the narcissist has good intentions and they're pretty much like you it's a mind game and it's used in order to manipulate you into trusting them easily and believing these people have good intentions these people will go above and beyond to show you please trust me you need to trust me. I'm the best. I'm great. I'll do anything. Look at this lovely gift. Yeah, I'll go watch that movie with you. Yeah, you might think you're overweight, but you're not to me. You're the best looking person I've ever met. You're the most smartest, great person. I just want to be with you all the time. I'm addicted to you. A partner believes so strongly that a narcissist is similar to themselves and believes in the goodness that they, they think they're seeing. Because we would never behave in the deceptive way that will come later on in the relationship. We believe it's real. We believe that they are in awe of us. And if we're a little bit insecure or we've had our confidence battered and shattered from narcissists and toxic people in the past, then all of a sudden this attractive, beautiful human being comes into it and tells us how great we are. We get texts every day. We get unexpected gifts. You know, it's exciting. It's new. They're addicted to you because it's new supply. And you're addicted to them because you believe all of the rubbish, all of the promises that they're giving you. But unfortunately, it's just an act. The next mind game is something called triangulation narcissists they set the stage for this early without partners realizing it by bringing up exes friends people who are distantly known or used to be in the picture or in their life this mentioned person is often described as having wronged the narcissist in some way or at least in negative terms this description is made in order to ensure that the person will not be suspicious of anybody else Okay, so with me, in my situation, my narcissists in the past have always slagged off their exes. They were scum, they cheated, they weren't good enough, they were pathetic, they were this, they were that. Yeah, you know what's going on here. This person hates me, I no longer work with that company because they were awful to me. I'm the victim, I'm this, I'm that. Yeah. When you break up with a narcissist or you've been discarded by a narcissist, guess who's going to be joining the hate campaign that they're smearing to everybody? Unfortunately, it's going to be you. They're going to be talking about you in a very negative way because why would they talk about you in a positive way? You're not giving them what they want. Even if they've destroyed you, they've been toxic, they've been terrible to you, they're always the victim. You're always the problem. You're always getting the blame. Them, they're perfect. Why would they be the problem? Why would they be the issue? That's how these people work. 
And that's how triangulation just makes things so much more complicated. And it happens really early on because you start hearing little bits and pieces. And then there's so many lies as well. In my case, the amount of time that narcissist that part, ex-partners or friends said, oh, I have no affiliation with that person. And then I've gone to a party and seen these people and said, oh, I've known that person for over 10 years. It's lies. It's BS. Don't believe it. Now, I've already done a video on this and I'll link it in the cards. Gaslighting. It makes us question ourselves. And it's probably the most important and effective way narcissists use to get us to do what they want. They manipulate us into slowly taking on their view of the world and accepting it's true, no matter how crazy, stupid or unjust it is. We begin to doubt our own memory and then we question our sanity. And then because they've gone and spoken to everybody else that we know in advance to make out that we're the crazy one, nobody believes us. Nobody. Did we actually see what we saw or hear what we heard? Did they actually cheat on us, even though we saw them as somebody else? But they're convincing us that they're not the cheater, we're the cheater, in, and we've never cheated before? Did we actually really witness some crazy toxic behavior? Or are we being oversensitive? Are we reading too much into it? It becomes easier to just let it go than face the wrath of the narcissistic rage, or to be punished in other ways them walking out, their empty threats, the verbal abuse, or other forms of betrayal, or I'm going to go out and party with my friends, and I'm not coming back until 2, 3 in the morning, or I might not even come back at all. And then there's no contact, and they ignore you. This is not just a mind game, or a psychological, or psychological trick being played against you. It's control. And when you alter somebody's reality, even though you're a good person, you believe in God or you believe in your religion, or even if you're an atheist, it doesn't really matter. You're a good person with good morals. You will be brought to the edge and brought to the point of where you actually think and believe what you're being told. A narcissistic ex-friend projected on me and verbally abused me, criticized about everything about me, from my appearance to my job, everything. And then because I got upset and I walked away, I was greeted with, you're overreacting. And I thought to myself, am I? Or is this disgusting behavior not tolerable? I think we both know what the truth is on that one. Lastly, baiting, AKA these guys, narcissists, know just how to push your buttons. And there's nothing worse than it. They've learned all of our secrets early on in the love bombing stage, where you open up to them, you think, you know what? I wish I was better at work. I wish I looked better. I hated making this decision. I've never shared this decision. That's what we do. We open up to these individuals because we've decided to trust them. They know exactly what sets us off and have no problem waiting until we are right in front of others before making a comment that will cause us to react in a way that will make us look like we are the problem. We're the sensitive one. We're the issue. Because they can remain calm and detached and cold, as they have no empathy, they are the ones who have been engaging in outrageous, inexplicable behavior. We may explode or react in ways that we don't normally react, we may do things or say things we don't normally do, because we are basically being baited to their toxic behavior and their negative outcomes. So a narcissist may say, you're a piece of work you're a piece of crap and i hate you and i hate your job and you're a loser that's not going to make you feel good considering this person loved you and admired you and said that they love your job or they love everything about you and you're not a loser but they say that against you because you know and they know that you're insecure about that or you're worried about that a narcissistic friend only a couple of months ago recently brought something up to with me that i felt sensitive about that really really caused me a lot of trauma and a lot of pain and they threw it back in my face not because um you know it, it was calculated in the sense of oh you know like i just want to cause an argument they did it because they knew it was going to hurt me they set out to hurt me they thought i want to hurt you because i have no empathy and i don't care about you and in this 
uh, circumstance, this narcissist was having a bad day and they decided to project on me for no reason. I was by their side. I was supportive of them. They're no longer a friend to me. I don't care about them. And they thought, well, how can I do this? I'll project on SCG and I'll tell them and I'll throw things back in his face that I know he's insecure about, he's sensitive about to upset him. That's what they do. It's absolutely awful. Again, this is a way of manufacturing an emotion, but they're doing it sometimes in front of others. In my case, my friend did it in front of all of my other friends as well. This has the effect of making them look like a victim or making them look justified in some sort of way for their disgusting behavior and actions. Let's make something abundantly clear. They have no right and nobody has no right to treat you this way. Okay, please, please remember that. It is harder to stay with these people than it is to walk away. And as I've always said, plan your exit, go no contact, stick to no contact and start your healing, start your recovery and start working on rediscovering who you really are. It doesn't matter how long you've been with the narcissist or surrounded by narcissists. You can turn your life around. There are better, healthier, more important things to do than to sit and stay in a narcissistic abusive relationship with toxic people who are destroying your life and your character. But the longer you stay, the worse it gets. I have walked away from so many romantic narcissistic relationships. I've walked away from so many friends who are narcissists. I've walked away from work agreements, bosses, you name it. You can do it, all right? But do the research, do the reading, reach out to people, plan it. Don't just make it abruptly. If you've got kids, it's complicated, but everything is going to be okay. Remember this quote, and I've always said this before. The narcissist in the long run always loses. The narcissist in the long run always loses. And all, if not most, narcissistic relationships of any kind always come to an end. This is SCG, signing off.